Well, we're back again today, and we're looking at the back of a Toshiba TV, um, specifically this type. Um, anyway, uh, what are we doing with this? Well, this has been handed to me, and somebody said, here, fix it. And they handed me this little piece, which is obviously the power connector that's been busted out of the back. Now, uh, obviously we're going to reattach that, but I'm looking in here and there's a lot of little componentry hiding around there. So, um, I'm not sure how well this is going to go back in, but, uh, we really need to get this TV open and there's a heap of screws and it's huge. So I've had to put this, uh, on a nice soft surface so I don't scratch the front. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to get into this with some screwdrivers and get the back off. This could turn out to be a quick video if it works out well. Um, you'll probably notice I've taken a break from some of the fanciness in my videos for a bit. A little bit demoralized after a comment, but um, somewhere around the start of April, you'll probably see a video to do with that. Um, but anyway, let's get out with a screwdriver and get this TV apart, and we'll try and extract this board so we can refit a PAL connector to it. All right, we've got some screws removed. Uh, now it's time to try and remove the rest of it. I'm just running my fingers over the labels, looking for any hidden screw galleries. Um, I thought there was one under there, but it's not. It's just a mold relief. All right, I'm going to try and lift this off, although I'm going to have to do this off camera because I need both hands. All right, so like half an hour later, um, I've got the back off. Uh, now I've disconnected the speaker connector here. This is our main board and this is our display driver board. I think also power supply in that. Uh, mains goes in here, goes through, a couple of filter caps, main fuse. Probably shouldn't poke at that. Big bridge rectifier, all that sort of stuff handling the supply. And that looks like a switching supply there with a couple of big power diodes. Won't stick my finger in that. Here's our big standoffs for mounting. So we really need to lift this board off, but this is the shield we need to deal with here. And oh dear, they've installed that as a module. Hmm, this could be fun. Well, I've got to get this board off anyway, so we'll continue disconnecting these connectors. Uh, this has got a mark on it. I hope this is a removable one. It is. All right, we'll rip this board off and we'll stick it over on the repair desk. Now, at this point, we have a bit of a problem. So we can see here that it looks like the uh, socket here has pulled through some of the uh, some of the solder or the through plating even as well um, out of this socket. Now, this is a little module that's soldered on, and if we flip over and have a look underneath, we can see that there's this row of pins here. So that's how everything connects. These are how the shields connect. Um, ideally, I'd like to pull that whole module off um, and solder things through from the rear, but I have a feeling that's going to be a rather lengthy undertaking. Um, this is trickier than it usually is when this happens to TVs. Now, this little insert here actually comes out, so I've got a feeling that maybe I can solder this whole shield in and then drop that insert in the middle and then maybe heat the pin and get the solder to flow through because that looks like a low melt lead free solder but ideally I'd want to really remove this shield here so I'm going to have a bit of a think about this before I start doing anything and then we'll decide how we're going to tackle this all right so after much deliberation I figured I should at least try and remove this first uh, if it's worth doing it's worth doing properly. So I'm putting just the tiniest little bits of solder paste on these pins here. And uh, I don't have a desoldering gun available to me at the moment. Um, normally I've got a big vacuum control one that's a uh, motorized one that's handy. But for today I'm going to use my trusty manual job. Now I'm warming up a soldering iron here and we'll need some fume extraction. So we'll do all this behind the camera. You'll hear fume extraction start, and I need some solder, which is over here. 
getting hung up on things today. And uh, we'll get a bit of this. We're about hot. Right, I'll clean and prep this iron and then we'll get ready to do some desoldering. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, and it usually happens with a technique that I choose for this. Oh, I've just put my finger on a blob of hot solder I neglected. I'm going to try and get these warm and get a little bit of lead solder into them just to change the, the way this behaves. And these are big shields so I can get them nice and warm without fear of um, damaging components. So my plan is to get these big ones clear first before I start touching the uh, little pins here. The idea behind adding a bit of solder here is to help it flow and also um, give it a little bit of suction ability, give it something to actually suck up. Hydraulic uh, suction, I think is the word. Right, so now we're going to get one of these hot. Uh, like nice and hot and try and avoid the surface mount components near it and the blades of the extraction fan. might be a solder wick job but we're getting somewhere this could take a while I'm going to try some solder wick now the trick with solder wick and that's not intended to rhyme is uh, keeping your fingers on the braid far enough up that you don't get burnt It also needs to be quite hot. So at this point, this is the first pin. It's not looking real good for the idea of lifting this can off the board. We have to try some alternate plans. Yeah, we would eventually get that, but it's going to take a month of Sundays. Let's try one of the other pins. I think I'm just going to need to settle for cleaning these up and trying plan B. This big one's going to be a pain. Oh, that one got my foot right then. Teach me to have exposed feet while I'm dropping hot lead on them. Alright, I think I'm going to clean this up from this side. Um, that shield is just too much heat dissipation for this little iron. So I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to have a look from the other side. Alright, so I wonder how much of this here is actually heat sink or heat. Uh, so it hasn't been soldered. It looks like originally um, this was actually like spot welded on or something. So I'm going to need to clean that up somehow, probably with a deburring tool. See if I can insert that socket in there. Now, crucially, I don't see any signs of solder on that originally, and there's this little copper ring about this. Maybe that was intended to be a friction fit in there. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is I can feel that pin actually slotting into that hole. So while I've got this on camera, bear with me a moment. So I need to do a bit of trickery whilst I've got it there. I'm going to try and get this little screwdriver here, or maybe a smaller one. The good old Stanley drip bits. I'm going to get a small one here that should hopefully fit down the pin. I'm going to try and see if I can get that inserted in that hole firmly. A friction fit might create an electrical connection satisfactory for the job. It did, and that shield just moved. I think what we might do is I'll leave that friction fitted in there and I think I'm just going to solder the rest around this. Um, that little ridge might hold it in there. It's in quite firmly. I think that might have been how they originally did it, was a friction fit. That seems a little unusual to do it that way, but yeah. Now where this was originally attached, it's been spot welded and the metal's actually snapped or sheared off. So we're going to substitute that with a bead of lead solder. So. Let's get in position to do that. I'm going to have to put a quick little tack on here first though, I think. So I might do that on a side that's not real great for you guys to see. But uh, 
I don't want to cock this up even though I'm kind of taking a half-assed approach here but yeah now that is going to move around quite a bit and we're going to need a significant amount of heat in here all right I'm going to tack this guy down off camera and we'll be back all right so I've got a somewhat ugly looking tack here um, but at least it's holding in place for the moment um, the next job I plan to do is just try and run that round. Now, two things I did before I started. Um, I hit it with a bit of contact cleaner, and I took a little bit of flux here, uh, flux gel, and uh, put the tiniest little drop on there just to get that bead started. So now I need to uh, put it in a more accessible position and try and continue that bead around. Um, it's in quite firmly now, but I certainly need a little bit more to hold that in. All right, let's get uh, repositioned here. It's at this point that things get a little tricky because I have to solder around the camera. But uh, yeah, now the relatively thick metal here is the shield at the bottom. And that's what I want to start with first. I want to get that nice and hot. There's a relatively thin shielding of the plug. We'll pick this up fairly easily. But this cools off pretty quickly and this little line hasn't quite got the horsepower to get the whole thing hot but that is a feature that I can exploit because it cools off enough behind it that it holds on so that's one half of our connector done or at least a third of it and we need to rotate around slightly so let's reposition this on the blue tack here we'll reposition the camera in a minute so don't get too worried that you won't be able to see uh, we'll bring that round and hopefully I can get in behind this. It's right about now that everybody decides to come out and whip a snip and run through the window here or past the window. It's kind of distracting. And we want to get this hot but we don't want to damage the plastic down here. My good, that's bonding nicely. Right. This is more like welding than soldering at this point. Um, you've got to kind of do the same thing you do with welding and sort of get that pull going and then just lead the pull around and keep feeding filler rod into it. And you've kind of got to keep the heat moving. And uh, when it's an uneven surface like this, it can be a little tricky. All right. So that's another third done, I think. I'll clean the iron. I'm glad I've got extraction in here because that, that flux is definitely stinking things up. All right, it's getting quite sturdy now. So there's a huge gap on this side. That's going to be a problem. It is quite strong at this point, but given that this has been snapped out, I don't really want to play games with this or take shortcuts. Now this could be tricky, I need to really bridge the solder over here. I might end up adding a bit of solder braid here for strength. Yeah, we've got a big bead forming over the side here. Oh, how to drop your soldering iron. Multiple sclerosis guys, it affects your dexterity. That's my excuse at least. So I'll chop that hunk off. Yeah, I've just got this little gap to close. I think I'm going to use some solder braid in there. Let me trim some of that to length. In fact, we've got a bit of stuff here that's already tinned. That might fill the gap nicely. So let's flip this around. We're just looking for something to sort of help bridge the sole around. So that's tacked in there well. We'll wrap that around the corner and we'll trim it a little bit. This is a bodgy repair, I know guys, as is a lot of my stuff. Um, this is more just showing you what I'm doing, not how to do it, so Although people seem to treat my Amiga videos as, you know, how-to's and I'm like, no, this is just What I'm doing to get stuff off them That's looking a little better It's a little stronger there But, um All right now, I'm really hoping that friction fit works. Oh, come off the boot tech. 
a little bit of a gap there, I think we can fill that. Um, see if I've got a bit of room here. Yeah. Here comes a lawnmower past my front door. I'm hoping you can't hear that, but I guess if you can, there's not much I can do about it. Alright, so. Um, connector successfully and messily bodged into this position. I'm not going to say that's a professional job by any means, but it's certainly going to be strong. It's not going to come off anytime soon. So I'm going to get some heat, uh, some contact cleaner in here. Where is it? Q contact cleaner. Wash some of the flux off it. And, uh, Try not to get that in my eyes, that was a close call. This is a bit of a scrub off for any of the flux from the flux core solder. Now I'm pretty sure the flux I've got on here, I've put through a big enough heat phase that it won't be corrosive anymore. I really hope not. Um, and this pin is not strictly centre. I think I can fix that. Anyway, let's uh, get this over to the TV. I'll do a quick tweak off camera and then we'll see if we can get a signal on the TV. I really hope we can. All right, so we've got the camera facing on a funny downhill angel. Oops, sorry, made a typo, downhill angle. Um, so we need to uh, reposition this board where it goes and plug it all back in. And uh, keep in mind, I'm not getting paid for this one. So in fact, I'm not even being remunerated in any fashion. So. Uh, this is just because I like the person that owns this. And no guys, not in that way, I'm married. But, um, besides the bloke that owns this one anyway. But, it'll be nice to see if he's happy. Might even pay me in toilet paper. Because that's, that's a thing at the moment. Toilet paper is like... People heard the words, you might have to be quarantined for 14 days. The first thing they think of is, what happens if I run out of toilet paper? And then only later on they decided, hmm, maybe I might need long life milk and things like pasta and stuff that stores for long enough that the apocalypse can happen. Meanwhile, you know, we buy stuff per fortnight and we've already got enough. Um, although I have bought, admittedly because of the scarcity of things, a few extra stuff, but not much. Just a few extra cans here and there, just... Because, yeah, stuff's getting harder to find. All right, let's put our connector back in here. Let's swing our camera angel around a bit. And uh, put that in there. Oh, camera decided it was going to go back again. Um, what have we got here? This is... This looks like that's the infrared remote control and lights on the front. This is coming over power supply from the backlight illumination. And it looks like there's some illumination control lines in there. Um, got our main display port. Everything else is pretty well in there. All right, let's, um, let's put the back on. I don't really want to put the back on without testing this, but there isn't much way around it. So uh, let's do this. Okay, after what seems like 300 or so screws later, ready to plug an antenna lead into this in a really precarious position and my big fat toes are in the way all right well it's gone in i'm gonna leave that sit gently let's go around the front and um we'll plug ourselves in uh, some power actually we've got that over here let's have a look over to my messy desk there's two milo tins keeping my 3d printer warm right we'll turn that on and uh let's go and Balance is not a good thing either these days. Well, we've turned green and turned on. Let's see if it's picking up a TV station. Should be programmed. I really hope it is. I'm going to find the remote and flick through a few channels. That is not good. Okay. Okay, so clearly um, either the repair didn't work or I have another theory that may or may not be correct. I have a suspicion that maybe the reason this got busted off is that uh, recently in this end of the world, the digital TV channels were all reshuffled and changed frequencies. So a lot of channels just stopped working. That message didn't get through to everybody. 
Um, so I'm thinking that perhaps they're thinking they had signal problems and they've wriggled the antenna and like tried to force it in and all sorts of stuff until it eventually broke. So I might actually just go and do a digital TV scan and um, if I can work out how to on this, uh, I'll do a channel rescan and see if it picks anything up. If not, I've got one more trick to try, but this might be buggered. Um, I could probably pull that module off, but I don't like my chances. But anyway, I've got a little trick. We'll do a channel rescan first. All right, I finally found the nondescript menu button. I guess set up, auto tune, digital TV only. Let's see if we get anything here. Normally, most of ours now are all up in this very last end of the band, whereas they used to be down here. And I understand that the ACMA made quite a bit of profit selling off the bottom end or the top end, one of the two, of the TV band to the mobile phone networks. Uh, and thus they had to reshuffle all the TV channels. Uh, and since then, at least in this town, I've had problems with TV reception, largely because uh, I think there's a lot of backhaul links that have a harmonic frequency somewhere near that. But yeah, at a certain time of night, pretty much our TV just drops out. There's something interferes with it all. Um, and uh, I've had that complaint from a number of people across town. And when I plot that on a graph through town, like with or on a GPS, like Google Earth, there's a big V-shaped um, patch that disappears out of the town. And I think that all lines up with a new uh, backhaul link that's attached to a pole uh, right near the power um, main substation in town. So I'm thinking maybe a backhaul link does like a scheduled backup of a night time or something. Um, this seems to reckon it's found 48 channels. Mm, I don't know, but <laughs> I think we might have found a signal reception problem. Might have been that things have been reshuffled, but let's see. Oh, haha, -ha, we have TV. Ha, ah, they didn't do a channel rescan and they busted the plug off trying to fix it. All right. I'm happy. Let's go and see um, this one. This one's always problematic this time of night, this channel. Now, I should point out here, let's turn the volume down. I'm going to go outside, or turn down volume. I'm going to go outside and show you the antenna I'm picking this up on. It's not some fancy digital TV Yagi or anything. I'll show you exactly what I'm picking it up on. All right, we're outside, and you'll see this scanner antenna here is what's hooked up to the TV. This is a station master for 70 centimeter, um, and this is a weather station, but yeah, that is all the TV is getting from, and I get better signal than everybody in town. Works right, really well. So it's working with all 48 channels. Um, the news, the bad news is always happening. Um, coronavirus, just got word that Trump might have COVID-19. Interesting, everybody's still buying loo paper by the bucket roll. Uh, I don't know what a bucket roll is, but it's just what comes to mind unscripted. So yeah, we're working pretty well. It's not a bad TV. Pretty quick little processor in it too. It's changing channels rather quickly. Um, oh, Arabic. Oh. Okay. Yeah, anyway, we're doing pretty well. So I did ask him, and indeed he was having signal reception problems beforehand, and that's why he broke the antenna off. He said, I was trying to wriggle the connector to clean it up, and it snapped off, so... Could have just done a channel rescan, but kind of interesting when you um, <laughs> yeah advertise the channel change on the TV that now doesn't pick up the signal. But anyway, this is a successful one. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Um, hopefully, it'll be another success. <laughs>